Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we've got another album review, the newest project from Post Malone, Austin. And you know, for this one, I don't feel like doing it alone. Haven't done one of these in a little while, so... All right, take two of this. And here we are with a special guest that we have not had on in about three and a half years, I think since the Kesha High Road review. It's John from ARTV. How you feeling, John? Hey, I'm hanging in there, Mark. Thanks for having me on. Apologies in advance if I sound a little bit like crap or look a little bit like that because getting over a cold, but happy to be here. It's been too long. It has, yeah. And especially for an album that, as some of you may have seen Rock Coliseum, we did announce that we were gonna put together this review. It's an interesting project to talk about from an artist I think we've got some contentious opinions on. Post Malone with Austin. Now, John, from your perspective, where do you come from with Post Malone, at least the past couple of albums? Yeah, Posty has been a tough one for me because at its core, Austin, the guy, is such a likable personality and he just seems like a very chill dude. But there's also the side that early on thought like, oh wow, this dude is super corny, especially with like Stoney and a huge part of Beer Bongs and Bentleys. But that's around the time where I started to see a little bit of a deeper thread there. And by the time we got to Hollywood's Bleeding, that was the album that really kind of flipped my perspective to see what the full potential could look like. And you know what? I think I'm kind of in a similar lane with you there because I hated Stoney. I thought, and honestly, outside of Candy Paint, I don't think Beer Bongs and Bentleys is that good either, especially with some of the bigger singles that leaned very heavily on that trap sound, felt very brittle, very really slapdash in the production. But when they got um, Louis Bell and Watt on, especially for Hollywood's Bleed and giving him that larger rock inspired, smoked out sound, I actually thought it really worked well for him. And he got more of a sense of groove which I think really helped. Um, what were you thinking on 12 Carat Toothache? I don't remember. <laughs> and that was an album that, well, I think we both hinted at it before that it felt like label interference may uh -huh. have played a factor in not only its sound, but its rollout, the way everything in that era was handled was just a mess. But if I can say one thing, on the positive spectrum there is that uh, at least the album knew how to be somewhat brief. It was around 43 minutes, I think. And mm -hmm. that is something that I think this album, Austin, could have benefited from a little bit more because Posty, he tends to go along with the albums and there's almost always some fat that really needs to be trimmed. You know what? I will agree with you there in terms of the brevity. The one thing I appreciated about, Holly, about 12 Care Toothache is that there was a lot of flickers of ideas. There were a bunch of them that did not work. The majority of his guest appearances, I don't think clicked at all, but there was moments like the song he did with Fleet Foxes or sure. like or like Lemon Tree is like you and I have talked about before. I yeah. think there's potential there. And I've had this feeling that Post Malone has wanted to move away from the trap sound for a while, get something closer to pop rock or folk that's probably a better fit for his unique vocals. He's talked about that a lot. Yeah, definitely. And I think that his approach to songwriting is getting better in the sense that he's writing songs on guitar first instead of just like, I don't know, you know, working in like some sort of program. Like in the past, like it felt like a lot of these songs were just cooked up in a couple of minutes without a ton of thought going into them. Mm -hmm. And while this album, Austin, was recorded in about a week from what I understand, I mean, in mm -hmm. a lot of places that does show, but he kind of has this kind of almost gleeful attitude now that uh, makes him feel a little bit more, shall we say, full in terms of being an artist, even if a lot of it doesn't click with me. You can definitely tell that he's gotten around some of the label interference. I will agree with you there. Um, and I think he does sound more comfortable. He feels like he's more in his own element and hasn't really sacrificed a lot of his personality, in my opinion, to do so outside of a couple moments, which I think we'll get to. Um, but your overall thoughts on Austin, like where do you think you're coming from on this one? I'm torn because again, at 52-ish minutes, 17 songs, there is a decent chunk that I just kind of feel like they're in nothingness, kind of like a mm. void, kind of almost like AI generated. But at the same time, 
you can tell that there's a little bit more care given to simple things that might not sound extraordinary in terms of growth, but things like uh, rearranging some of the chords, approaching the songwriting a little bit differently. It stands out on songs like Sign Me Up, where the pre-chorus, for example, it almost strikes me as like almost a little Nirvana-esque, but make it <laughs> pop. There's moments like that that really do stand out, but for every one of those that floats to the surface, I feel like there's almost two with like a ballast tied to the foot, kind of weighing it down with like an off-kilter lyric or a throwaway line here, or something like uh, something real, where I just feel like how many times have I heard this exact message just packaged slightly differently in the past two or three years? See, that's interesting because I'm gonna come at this from a bit of a odd perspective. This might be my favorite Post Malone album. Wow. Um, in terms of overall song construction, in terms of getting a, a pop formula that really works for him, I think he's finally found something there. He's really building on a lot of that pop rock folk sound. It's a little bit more guitar driven. I think that's a natural fit. I sure. think that he's got groove for the first time in a long time, because I find a lot of the trap grooves he had were very brittle, didn't allow the songs to build much momentum. It's interesting you highlight something's re something real, because I think that's probably the first immediate standout on the album, if only because it feels huge. It feels like Louis Bell and Watt gave him a lot of sound and operatic presence to really play with and actually really make his own. Try to make, let's be honest, some pretty flimsy ideas at their core actually feel bigger. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm with you on the overall sound of the song. It's uh -huh. massive. I like the idea of like a choir coming in and making this mm -hmm. sound larger than life, but uh, I think that's kind of what I was hinting at with the whole idea of the if one thing's floating, the other's trying to be the ballast sinking it. I feel like the core idea lyrically is just so overdone to me that I see a lot of the things that I like about it, but it's not quite enough to make it fully float. And there's other moments where he's liking the idea of like bringing on strings or something outside of his typical wheelhouse to try and make the songs feel maybe a little bit more epic or full mm -hmm. of pizzazz or whatever. And I just feel like at this point, so many artists are tacking strings onto things that it doesn't just like, you know, it doesn't inherently automatically make a song better or elevate it. And there's songs later in the track list that I'm sure we'll get to that uh, kind of suffer from that problem, at least to me. I, th I can agree with you there. I think the big, the one of the big indictments I have on this album is that it can feel bloated. I think you and I both agree with that, but I also don't think it always makes the best of its bloat. There is, this is an album that goes for 17 tracks. Ideally should have been 13 and giving some of these songs a little bit more epic room to breathe. And yeah. the other, and one thing I will also highlight is that I think a lot of the acoustic songs just feel underwritten to me. Like I think yeah. that there's that there's ideas at their core, but they're framed so basically that even if they are effective, there's nothing that's super special beyond the presentation. Are we talking tracks like Green Thumb, or do yeah. we have another example? Uh, Green Thumb comes to mind. Um, the the er, the opener I didn't love. I found yeah. it, it started a little slow. Um, yeah, a, kind of like, like a stall out to start, which is odd. Yeah. Well, it presents a much more lethargic pace, which might represent more of the album, but at the same time, I'm not sure it, it kicks into gear as strongly as something real that goes straight into Chemical. I like Chemical a lot still. Yeah. Um, catchy, really catchy. It's nothing like mind-blowing or game-changing, but it no. gets the job done and it continues to grow on me. I really do like that song in, I believe Morning was like the Morning is great, song. yeah. I love that song and I really uh -huh. like the idea of him being so mad at his buzz being killed that he's going up and throwing a bottle at the sky because he's mad at God. It's just a funny image that I can actually believe and see happening. <laughs> and, and that's the one thing I will say about some of the debauchery on this album. You can clearly tell that Post Malone's not exactly having a lot of fun, but at the same time- uh, he's... he's calling her Shrek because she got a donkey, Mark. <laughs> okay. But worst <laughs> lyric on the album by a mile. I, I think we can both agree with that. I audibly laughed at that moment. It's so out of place, it's not even funny. Well, I mean, it's funny, a, but it's not even funny. It, it's funny in the pathetic way. 
Where, yeah. Which, and that to me has a certain element of charm. Like the other song that jumps out to me is Texas T, oh, which is trying God, to be thank you, thank you, tr <laughs> trying to be so heavy and stomping and ponderous with a lot of its flexes. I think it's entirely a put on. It's entirely yeah. overblown. But at the same time, I don't hate it as a result because again, I think it's the groove is there. There's something to there's something to the swell that I find compelling, and I find Post Malone probably at his most compelling when he is a doofus and fuck up very simultaneously. Yeah, I I, I think that definitely works uh, when he's doing those things. But in a way, does the album to you kind of feel like, I don't know, maybe that guy that you go for like a lake day or at the beach or something, and he kind of like wades into the water, rolls up his jeans, but he won't get all the way in? That's how I feel about this album. I think that's a, definitely appropriate for some of the tracks. In my opinion, the pop tracks. Like the sure. tracks that are very like the track I think is probably the worst on the album is Speedometer. Oh, because, thank you. yes, that is the biggest. Uh, I, I have a note written down. It's the most obvious filler that I have heard in a long time. That is such a nothing burger of a track. Which is kind of a shame because it's got a cute little groove. It it could build to something, but there's no hook to it. It feels very honestly. It feels built for TikTok. And that's sure. the uh, that's the other thing. Another complaint I have about the structure of a lot of these songs, they're the shortness does not do them any favors. Like the yeah. songs like Overdrive being so abbreviated is not a good sign. No, not at all. They cut out what could have led to interesting moments like mm -hmm. Overdrive. I think there's definitely momentum for a bridge begging for it right yes. there. But I'm left enjoying kind of sort of the song, but like Give me something real. Give me something more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and the one, the couple songs I think actually build really good grooves. Um, enough is enough. I thought mm. was good on the back half. It just because it feels bigger and in this in a way I think is pretty compelling. Um, buyer beware mm, is another yeah. one I liked because it's got there's a swagger to this album that again is it feels like a, it's a put on, but it's a put on that I can almost relate to where you think you're cool, you're kind of a little sloppy, but you're owning enough of it in the moment that it can almost work. Yeah, it doesn't feel like out of pocket or out of character for Post Malone. But to rewind very briefly, uh, a slight disagreement in terms of uh, enough is enough. Uh -huh. If I floated out there the theory that it sounds like a rejected One Direction B-side, especially on the <laughs> yeah. how would you feel about that? I would agree, um, because there's, that's the other thing that's a little frustrating with this album. As much as I like the tones, you can very clearly tell the pop structures and which Post Malone is drawing upon. And the thing that I could never escape, especially around Chemical and some of the more atmospheric sections, and I'm like, okay, Post Malone, you don't want to make a War on Drugs album. <laughs> you very clearly do, and you want to- Do somebody, it. Please do, it'd be very interesting. I'd like to see Post Malone go more in an indie rock sound and direction. Yeah. I feel like a lot of this album is being torn apart by its conflicting pieces, but in a di but not in a label way. More in a, I have a lot of ideas, but I've not given them enough thought to fully expand on them. Yeah, and that's where it runs into the whole idea of like, okay, recording an album in a week like this one supposedly was, like, uh -huh. that can be a great thing. If you're running on full speed, the momentum, he's got his collaborators in the studio, like Andrew Watt and everything, and mm -hmm. you're running full steam ahead with the ideas, it can be great, but I do feel like it would have benefited from one, a handful of guest features that actually yep. work and have chemistry with Post, mm -hmm. and two, I think that it just would have come out a lot stronger had some of these tracks been given the okay let's take a week away and then come back to the studio and see if there's any other decisions or choices or swaps that we want to make and that's why i feel like the album does feel a little stunted i would agree with you there i think there are mo i think there's enough strong moments and i i get enough behind the the framing of what post malone's debauchery is and there's a little more complexity i like that the paranoia is pretty much gone because that yeah. was an element about hollywood's bleeding and uh beer bongs bentley's i never liked yeah. and but at the same time i also feel like there's a better album in here and yeah. like and it, it wasn't exactly a good sign when i was thinking like you know what dial drunk might be better than every song here 
as that remix with Post Malone and Noah Khan. Yes. And, like that yeah. song is the Little Lion Man of 2023. I'll keep on saying it, but it also is the perfect moment that fits this, and it'd be great on this album. Yeah, it would. I would not be surprised if they end up tacking it on as a bonus track or something yeah. like that, which is pretty common in the streaming era. But I, <laughs> I, I don't know if this is going to be a hot take or not, but I think that song is better than anything on the album. <laughs> yeah, I, really, I, I would agree with you completely. I think this yeah. album, I, again, this is the sort of album I also think, again, with you bringing up guests that would otherwise fit into this vibe, I'm also trying to wonder what guests would make sense for it. Well, Noah, for one, of course. I think yeah. that they could have done something for Post's album. If Posty is giving him a verse for uh -huh. Noah's remix of his song, yeah. then something could have happened there. But, um, you know, I think I, not so much in terms of this is exactly who I want, but I know what I like when I hear it. So Noah's one great guest. Fleet Foxes are a great guest. Mm -hmm. More stuff that feels less like, oh, the label wants this because it's going to be opportunistic on TikTok. I need yeah. something less like that and more like something real <laughs> yeah ironic given something real is the sort of song that feels so bombastic it feels like the sort of thing that it sounds expensive for as yeah. much as the label throws it it sounds like something the label put money behind landmine is also a song i think they also put a lot of money behind now, i also think is not my favorite it feels a little underwritten doesn't come to a full idea but yeah it mm -hmm. kind of flubbed it a little bit for me, and that's what I was hinting at earlier when I talked about songs, that it's like, just because you pull out the strings doesn't automatically equate that to being this huge, Deep epic, or amazing huge. song inherently. I think Landmine mm -hmm. is, for a song that Post is claiming is his favorite on the album, it's probably in my bottom five on the record, to be honest. Yeah, I I, I can feel that. Um, again, the one that, one that I think this is a song that stands out in ways I don't particularly like is like Socialite. Oh, yeah, that was that is definitely, I have a note here right below that that has Socialite and Speedometer in there so, lumped in with Landmine for me. And I also think like Too Cool to Die, just uh, eh, not really. It's kind of an eye roller, you know? There's yeah. a lot of moments like that that aren't as egregious as calling her Shrek because she got a donkey, but you know, there's moments that kind of do come close in terms of it not just being like a one-hit dose of cringe, but being uh -huh. more of like a full-on, oh wow, this entire song is just kind of here. Well, and I also think that that's the frustrating thing with Post Malone, because you get the feelings that there is inspired moments of depth, but there are enough of them are in contradiction with each other that it doesn't really feel like it builds to a solid thematic whole. Like, it feels like I kind of get it shtick within the first five or six songs, and it doesn't really culminate to anything more and that yeah, it doesn't it doesn't me. expand on it it doesn't build yes. on top of that the layering isn't come uh, isn't coming and i i feel like this album is probably at its best when it's embracing the kind of sunnier side of life that he's found the flip side yeah. of the coin whatever you want to call it or if he's actually wading into the deep end which i don't think he does often enough and mm -hmm. if we could get more like the closing track of the entire album, Laugh It Off. I would love yeah. to see more like that because it actually feels a little bit more intriguing. And I found it off-putting at first, but that song grew on me with a couple of listens. And I really like what he did in terms of kind of the uh, persona he gives and the uh, more introspective, minimalistic building to like a full band playing at the explosion mm -hmm. at the end. I would have loved to see more like that. I think, again, there's so many opportunities for this. This is the sort of album that feels like it is flushed with potential, and I don't know when we would see that realized. Because if you're in a comfort zone, you're not often driven to explore, to expand outside of it. So yeah. the question will come is, wow, this is very promising, and there's pieces here I like, I don't know how much further he would push this. So yeah. in terms of your favorite songs, what do you call those out as? Okay, I got a top four for you. Let's see what okay. you think. All mm -hmm. right, I got a back-to-back, -back, Nova Candy and Morning. I think those two are pretty mm. great in terms of combination, and I love the flow from Nova Candy, the kind of extended outro. Like we were talking about, a lot of the songs feel too crammed. This one actually yeah. has a little bit of room to breathe. I find mm -hmm. the track itself super catchy. Probably, possibly my underdog favorite on the album. And then mm -hmm. Morning uh, coming in, proving that kind of this booming, bassy take doesn't have to be a bad thing with Post if he's kind of staying more true to himself 
and this song feels like that. And I would also, agree. Yeah. Yeah, I would also put the closing track "Laugh It Off." And also, uh, Sign Me Up, which was a nice surprise. Mm. I actually really ended up enjoying that song, especially the uh, pre-chorus and the hook. See, that's the funny thing. I never quite clicked with Sign Me Up. It, to me, it felt... It's one of those songs, to me, it felt a little bit too formulaic to me. Like, it felt like it, it led into itself very obviously. Um, mine were something real for... I appreciated the bombast. Um, sure. Morning... I really liked Enough is Enough, um, even if, again, I agree with you with the One Direction comparison. Take me home. Those <laughs> pianos booming away. All I can think is, like, is this Steal My Girl Part 2? <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, we're not getting pop music like that, though. A lot That's of true. Especially in 2023. I can appreciate when... I appreciate that Post Malone at least has the balls to go for something bigger. That's um, true. Yeah, uh, I, I, I will give him credit for that. Kudos. I appreciated Buyer Beware and... I like chemical and there's a part of me that unironically thinks Texas tea is not terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to have a conversation with that part of you. <laughs> yes. exactly. So I don't give scores anymore. I know you do, but we'll, we'll, we'll give scores for this, for this album. What would you give it? Well, uh, I, I've been teetering back and forth all day leading up to this. And yeah. it's, it's between a strong two and a light 2.5 out of five on my okay. scale. Okay. For me, it's been teetering back and forth between a strong six and a light seven. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I like this, though. <laughs> I like that we're coming out of a conversation. I feel uh -huh. like in a lot of our reviews in the past, we've ended up in very similar territory, not just uh -huh. in terms of scores, but, you know, overall sentiments on the album. And while yeah. I do think that there's a lot that we agree on with Austin, mm -hmm. we clearly have some differing viewpoints <laughs> on specific Absolutely. parts of the album, which is a good thing it's healthy i would agree so john where can they find you well you can find me right here on youtube the most active place that i am uh i talk about music i review stuff i will post short reviews sometimes uh i do countdowns like my seven on sunday show i do rankings of discographies so check out the channel if you haven't already or you can find me on instagram at artv john and thank you very much, John, for coming on board. This is some great stuff. Happy to have you. We should do this again sometime. Absolutely, man. Maybe next time on my channel. Sounds good. All right. Talk to you later. Peace. So yeah, once again, thank you all so much for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I would be extremely grateful. Please go out and give ARTV a like, share, and subscribe as well. I, he can definitely appreciate it. He's got a bigger platform than I do, but hey. There might not be some crossover. Let's make sure that the audiences sync up a little bit better. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. And if you guys want to get projects on my schedule going forward, well, potentially going forward in the next couple of weeks, link to my Patreon is right over there. If you guys actually want to be able to interact and support the channel, or just argue with me directly on my Discord, option is available. Till then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse. And I'll see you next time.